On an objective like this, the striker does a lot of things. One, the striker, uh, as proven in combat, is, is a very quiet vehicle. We've actually done raids before, and people have never heard us until we are, you know, until we're entering the building. It brings a uh, bigger weapon system, 50 cals and Mark 19s. You know, it gives you more longer range. It gives you uh, better visibility, more firepower. You get to where you got to get. You do your operation, and then you get out, and it's fast. Speed has become a trademark of a striker mission. But leaving an engagement, the striker team also relies on another of the vehicle's strengths, an armor package that can handle almost any munitions they're likely to encounter. Humvees and other lightly armored vehicles can match the striker's maneuverability and speed, but they are vulnerable. Small caliber machine gun rounds and small explosives can pierce their thin skins, often with lethal consequences. We're gonna push it, we're gonna push it out of the way. A driver uses his Humvee to remove a car from the road but no one suspects that it's packed with explosives. Get up! Get up! Get up! You okay? You okay? Miraculously, no one was injured in this blast, but the Humvee was reduced to a useless hulk. Soldiers quickly rushed to salvage what they could. Explosions like this one happen with startling regularity in Iraq. And it is precisely this kind of attack the striker is built to survive. Okay. Okay. I was personally involved in at least two blasts. One, I was in a Humvee, and I was very, very lucky not to get killed. I mean, it was like dumb luck that I didn't get killed. My front windshield was smashed in, and that was a very small IED. Several months later, I was in a striker. The striker in front of me took two artillery rounds that were cemented in the uh, sidewalk. Very large blast. One of our guys did get hurt, but considering that they blew it right when we were on top of it, we feel very safe riding in a striker. Capable of surviving direct hits from some of the world's most lethal munitions, the striker's sophisticated armor package protects its crew from heavy enemy fire. The striker's main armor package is comprised of three layers. The first layer is a network of 132 one-inch thick ceramic tiles. Weighing half as much as steel, it is similar to the armor plating on the Abrams tank. The next layer is a quarter inch of steel, reinforced with a half inch of Kevlar. If a round hits the striker, the ceramic armor shatters, dispersing the blast across the tile's surface, and the Kevlar reinforced steel bends to absorb the kinetic energy. This multi-layered armor enables the striker to withstand a direct hit from a 14.5 millimeter heavy machine gun. The armor shields the crew from not only frontal and side attacks, but also protects them from explosive devices that strike from below. Strikers in combat have suffered ugly battle scars, but their crews have stayed well protected. The addition of a thick steel cage, known as slat armor, enables the striker to sustain direct hits from rocket-propelled grenades, or RPGs. Capable of destroying all but the most heavily armored vehicles, RPGs can pierce 15 inches of solid steel. Unimpeded, rocket-propelled grenades would tear right through the striker. When an RPG hits, the slat armor bears the brunt of the strike, detonating the round on impact and directing the shrapnel away from the vehicle. It has proven so effective that strikers have survived hundreds of direct hits from rocket-propelled grenades. The slant armor they give us is the armor that stops the RPG rounds, and it just stood up marvelous, just beautiful in their act. They could take a beating and just keep going, and that, that's one of the biggest things I like, is because you could just shoot it to death and it'll keep going for you. The striker's armor protects its crew from most conventional threats. 
But on the battlefield of Iraq, the enemy's weapon of choice is anything but predictable. This striker in the northern Iraqi city of Mosul was put to an extreme test. Hit by a roadside bomb, the vehicle was knocked onto its side. Only moments later, it was flipped back onto its wheels and driven away. Only one crewman was injured with a broken arm. IEDs, or improvised explosive devices, have been a weapon of choice for Iraqi insurgents. Roger, that's good copy. Saying that there's an IED and an old ING Hulk that's sitting on this road that's to the west of my position right now. Break. We currently have uh, our red platoon that's quartering off that street, and we're searching for the ID right now. Over. Striker crews often uncover a wide range of IEDs while on patrol. Like currently, we're looking at second stories of buildings, rooftops, and making sure that uh, when we pass vehicles that they're not moving so the vehicle behind us is safe. But when you're out there, it's purely business. You know, you're thinking about your guys inside the vehicle, you know, their safety and everybody else's safety out there. And that's what keeps each other alive. Everybody's thinking about everybody else. You have to be able to cover both your sides, watch each other's backs, basically. On a typical mission, a striker team in Mosul responds to reports of a large IED in a residential neighborhood. You want the striker to stop right here to block us? They lack the specialized training to defuse the bomb, but they provide cover for a member of the Explosive Ordnance Disposal Squad. The strikers cordon off the street and the infantry scans the windows and rooftops for snipers. We have a mission to do. We understand that mission. And uh, we go out there pretty much protecting each other, making sure each other are safe, and uh, get the mission done. And that's pretty much about it. This mission is over in just minutes when EOD disarms the bomb. The wagon holds two 107 millimeter rockets wired together and hidden under a pile of dirty laundry. They're attached to a washing machine timer and a radio that serves as a remote trigger. Simple devices like this can wreak havoc indiscriminately. Hundreds of U.S. troops and thousands of Iraqis have been killed and maimed by IEDs just like this one. 2-5, this is 3-3, uh, be advised. Uh, 107 millimeter rockets neutralized. Uh, we picked them up, put them in an EOD, Victor. Break. Not far away, the same team uncovers another lethal find. This is a, we uncovered an anti-tank mine with our plow. Uh, EOD is reducing at this time over. EOD decides that it's safer to destroy this one in place rather than move it. Uh, most important thing, we kept the uh, Iraqi forces safe, we kept the American forces safe uh, from, these, uh, from these IEDs, and also we helped the uh, local populace um, so they're not around these explosives. The children are out in the streets playing, so we kept them safe as well. So it was a very, very successful day today. But keeping the streets safe takes a toll on the strikers. On the front lines, strikers inevitably sustain serious damage and severe wear and tear. The turbo's blown. It just shatters it. In Mosul, over 100 strikers come into the base maintenance shop every month. Heading the CRT, or Combat Repair Team, is Chief Warrant Officer Joseph Dubloy. These vehicles have been in country now, you know, going on two years, which is a lot of wear and tear on any tactical vehicle. 